Hello, Liverpool. Hello. How are you? You okay? Yeah. yeah. That young lad, uh, Russell, what's his name? He's no bad, eh? He's quite good. It's all right, eh? All right. He jumps about the stage too much for my fucking like. <laughs> He's the fucking same back in the green room. The like fucking Tigger. Fucking settle down, son, settle down. <laughs> I do most of my gigs up in Glasgow. <laughs> it gets the unfair reputation of being a violent city. I've found it the, the opposite. You can go into a bar there and a local will just tap you on the shoulder and ask you if you've got a problem. That's just unprovoked kindness. <laughs> but you down here, Liverpool, you've got a more inquisitive fucking angle. You just ask me what I'm looking at. <laughs> Are you fucking looking at? <sighs> I just recently turned uh, 60. Yeah. How you don't look at you, thank you. And uh, my wife was very concerned, um, and she booked me in for a dementia test. <laughs> I was fucking livid. <laughs> so I purposely missed the first appointment. <laughs> and I got in, and I'm never at the doctor's, right? And I, I got to the doctor's surgery, and he opened the door, and he went, oh, hi, Ian. I can't remember the last time I seen you here. <laughs> I said, has the test started? <laughs> what kind of fucking open line is that? <laughs> he said, uh, right, I'll start a test. And he, he said, I'm going to give you an address. And I want you to recall that address in 10 minutes' time. I said, right, that sounds quite easy. The address is 121 Kensington Terrace, Knightsbridge. I said, for fuck's sake. So I got it into my head. I'm trying to remember this 121 Kensington Terrace, 121, 121, 121, 121, 121. <laughs> then he gave me the second part of the test. He says, I want you to draw the face of a clock and fill the numbers in. But I'm going 121, 121, 121. <laughs> so I starts at the top, one. Two, three, four. I guess the four at a quarter past, and I justified it to myself by saying one over four is a quarter. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, right up to the fucking twelve, right? And I held it up to him, and he went, "I've never seen that before." He says, "You've got one at the top." I went, "What?" <laughs> Pass the test. I've been married to uh, 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 Zimbabwe <laughs> for uh, <laughs> what a great name that would be, eh? <laughs> Zimbabwe, I'm home. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. <laughs> like they would sing that. Aye. <laughs> but that's me bad for Zimbabwe, you know. Married for 26 years to the lovely Morag. She usually comes and visits me at my gigs, but she's not here tonight, so I'm going to talk about her. <laughs> she's a wee bit sarcastic, though. Um, the other morning, we're at the breakfast table, and uh, she turns to me and she says, remember I've got an appointment this morning at half past nine? I says, what's her like? And she went like this. That'll be the dentist, is it? <laughs> and she went, aye. I think fuck it wasn't your smear test. <laughs> That's got more teeth. <laughs> <laughs> she's, ter she's terrible, so she is. She says, it's no about time you lost some weight. What about 
some exercise. Try cycling. I went, cycling, that sounds easy. So I bought a bike, and I was amazed within the first two weeks, I managed to lose the bike. <laughs> Just parked it outside Greg's. <laughs> Some other fat bastard went away with him. <laughs> she bought me all the gear, the skin tight top, right, it shows off my nipples and the padded shorts that shows off my already massive balls. <laughs> Easy, Kenya. And she says, you're at a funny age, you need to get one of these heart monitors. And you wear it in your, your chest and a strap around your chest, right? And you get an app on your phone that tells you when you're about to die. <laughs> I should have worn it tonight. <laughs> so a few weeks back, I'm going to get my bike out the shed. I leave the house and she shouts at the top of her voice out the kitchen window, have you got your strap on? I'm dressed like the only gay in the village. <laughs> you got your strap on. Fucking settle down. Have we got any cyclists in here? Woo. Oh. Are you still on the bike? <laughs> With no saddle. There's a... Uh, because there's an event held around the world called the World Naked Bike Ride. Anybody heard that? The World Naked Bike Ride. Now, it's up to 500 cyclists and they cycle in the nude, right, to highlight cycling road safety. <laughs> That's all right for women because they'll stick to that saddle like a phone holder and a windscreen. <laughs> That's not so much fun for the boys. My wife, she works in Superdrug, the retailers, right? And she brought some stuff home that wasn't selling last Christmas, right? It was toiletries and Christmas decorations and that, right? And she says, uh, I've brought some stuff home that's going to boost your sex lives up. <laughs> what are you brought like? <laughs> she says, I've got some stuff in a can. It's called Tingle. Tingle. What do you do with that like? You spray it on your erogenous zones. And it makes them highly sensitive during lovemaking. The lassies rave about it and the work. We're going to try it tonight. I says, I can't fucking wait. <laughs> Up the stairs, into bed, light suit, because we know where everything is. There's something been lying out for the last time. <laughs> she says, I'll spray mine first. She goes, Shh. <laughs> I said, fucking leave some, eh? <laughs> Shh. It's a family size tin. <laughs> Shh. So she hands me the tin, right? So I goes, Shh. She says, what's happening with you? She says, what's happening with me? My cock's in fire. <laughs> Give me that tin. Put a light on. Puts a light on. What's it called? A uh, tingle. This is tinsel. <laughs> I've got a cock like a dashboard Christmas tree. <laughs> Fucking tinsel. I went away for Christmas, we went abroad. I thought I'd treat her, went to Abu Dhabi for Christmas. First thing she said was, well, we still get pigs in blankets. <laughs> I doubt it. So I thought I'd treat her, uh, it was a half six check-in at the airport, and I thought, we'll stay at a hotel at the airport, right? 
So we took six bottles of Peroni, a bottle of Prosecco and a half bottle of vodka because we didn't want to sleep in, eh? <laughs> it fucking worked. <laughs> Guess the airport checked in at half past six is a two-hour delay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Witherspoons. <laughs> Two more hours drinking. I'm boarding the flight. Gets in the flight. Takes off. Next thing, there's an announcement, Uratanoi. Somebody had actually collapsed at the back with a heart attack, right? <laughs> That's no funny. Announcement says, uh, is there a doctor on board? And my wife, without a word of a lie, leaned over to me and says, should I tell him I work in Superdrug? <laughs> no unless a guy's perspiring to death, no. <laughs> Let me at him with my perspiring. Aye. So we land there, right? And we get to uh, the, the queue for immigration. Right, Abu Dhabi. And we noticed it's eye recognition cameras I've got there to identify you. You've been drinking for nine hours. <laughs> You're never going to identify me with my fucking eyes. <laughs> You'd be quicker with dental records. So we had your Christmas dinner and we got bluttered and we were really fucking drunk, right? Because my wife can really drink. She's like a commercial drinker, right? <laughs> and after a few hours, right, we left the hotel and we're roaming about. And everywhere in Abu Dhabi's five-star hotels, everywhere. And my wife, all she could think about, right, was I'm needing a toasty. I says, put that out of your fucking head. You can't walk into a five-star hotel and ask for a toasty. <laughs> That'll not be fucking happening. So we get back to our own hotel and I says, I'm needing to go to the toilet. So I went into the toilet for you. And I comes out and she's standing there with a red face. I says, what's wrong with you? She says, I got propositioned by a Lebanese businessman there. And I'll not lie to you, he promised me a toasty. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how the fuck do you not take it? Anyway. I used to be a locksmith. I used to break into cars for a living. <laughs> Honest to God, right? And I'm going to tell you this true story. This One Saturday afternoon I was working late and it was about back of five, and somebody, this lassie phoned me, went and she says, look, eh, I've, I've eh, dropped my keys in the back seat of my BMW in a multi-story car park, would you mind coming out and opening the car for me? I says, no problem. Now promise me you'll be here for six, because the fucking car park shuts, eh? I went, oh, okay, I'll be there for six. Now, you promise me. I says, I promise. So I get there. I open the car. She was delighted. She squares me up. And I leave. And I says, before I leave, darling, would you mind leaving a wee review on my website? She says, I'd love to. So I get to him and I says to the wife, I had a great day today. This lassie was so appreciative and she's going to leave a review on my website. Later that night, my wife shouted me through and says, you better come and see what this fucking review is. <laughs> this is what she wrote, and this is fucking true. <laughs> I'm so pleased you turned up for sex like you promised. I didn't know what to do, as I've never been licked out before. (laughs) 
I couldn't believe how easy it was to drop my kecks in the back seat. <laughs> I'll finish off with this. I've got two grandkids, right? I love them to death, right? The oldest one, she's 12 year old. And she comes and stays with us every week. Every Tuesday night, she comes and stays with us, right? And the other week there, she come round, right? And she came in the house and she says, uh, Papa, I've got some homework. Will you help me with it? I goes, depends what it is, darling. She says, it's a project on Africa. <laughs> I'd love it. Project on Africa, right? I says, no problem, that's my favourite subject. Go through the kitchen, give me a shout if you need a hand. Ten minutes later, she shouts through. Papa, how big is a camel toe? <laughs> well, it depends on the camel, darling. <laughs> it's about 12 inches, call it a foot. <laughs> a wee while later, she shouts through. Papa, how far is a mile? I goes, I know that one, darling, it's 1,600 metres. Are you about finished the homework? She says, I've not even started, Papa. <laughs> I says, well, what's with the questions? She says, I'm on my mum's Facebook page, and apparently she was out last night, and everybody could see her camel toe a mile away. <laughs> Love it, you've been brilliant. I've been in here. Thank you very much. Ha, ha, ha.